to Inside the Film Room. I'm Kristen Urgel. Today we will talk men's and women's hoops, recap the games, and have a preview of the next. We start with head men's basketball coach Matt Figure. Coach, you picked up two commanding victories last week. The Gov scored 90 plus in back to back games against Division I competition for the first time since 1999. Why the sudden offensive outburst? That's a good question, Kristen. I, um, we ran really good offense both games. Uh, it's a credit to our kids being, out, being able to come out and execute, especially out of timeouts. Um, we did an unbelievable job uh, coming out of timeouts in both games, and, and uh, we're getting more comfortable with what we want to do. As the season has progressed, um, we, we've been able to get more comfortable with one another's strengths and weaknesses, and it's just also come down to guards making shots as well. The Gavs were limited to nine players against EKU and Moorhead State. How did that change your rotation? Uh, it, 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 uh, you got to be very careful with, with minutes played and, and you got to be careful with foul trouble. We got in a little foul trouble against uh, Moorhead, so um, it just gives guys opportunities and, and you know, everybody who's, who has dressed has contributed one way or the other. Austin Peay's six-game home winning streak, it's his best since the 09-2010 season. How have you been able to defend home court throughout conference play? Mental preparation. I, I think that's been the biggest. I think our guys have been uh, focused mentally for the most part. We have a few lulls in games like every every team does, but uh, you know they, they, they're comfortable here and, 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 and it's shown and we've played well at home. Now we got to figure out a way to play well on the road. You've seen UT Martin and Simo earlier this season. What do you take from those games into your prep this week? Um, I, I felt like we played really well uh, in both games for about 30 of the 40 minutes. And we had two periods, one against Martin, one against Simo, which we'll deal with later on the week, that um, we got stagnant both offensively and we didn't defend um, the dribble penetration. Those are the things we got to harp on these, on this road trip. You got your first road win two weeks ago against JSU. What do you need to do to secure positive results in Martin and Cape Girardeau? Continue playing offense the way we have. Just be confident. Um, when we've not won games on the road, it's been because of lack of offensive production. Um, sometimes when you play bad offense, it leads to bad defense. So we've got to play well and play confident on, on the offensive end. After battling injury and illness, Dayton Gum has rebounded recently. Is he ready to become that consistent third compliment to Avery Ugba and Terry Taylor? Uh, I, I sure hope so. He would, he would become a fourth compliment. Basically, uh, in, in league play, Chris Porter Bunton has been our third guy to go to. And then uh, it's been Dayton and, and then a mixture of either Zach or Steve. So uh, I would like to get some more consistency out of those, all those guys. All right, best of luck. The Govs head to UT Martin on Thursday. Tip-off is at 7.30. Coming up, we'll visit with Coach David Midlake. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm with head women's basketball coach David Millett. Coach, the offense struggled early against Eastern Kentucky, but your defense held the Colonels to just 45 points. How is this group able to disrupt offenses so well in conference play? I think it's the second straight week we've played pretty well defensively. Going down to Tennessee State and Belmont, we contested shots, uh, even though we gave up a, a large number to Belmont, and I think it carried over on Thursday. Uh, good scouting report uh, by our assistant coaches, and our team carried it out. Fallon Baker put the offense on her back against EKU, scoring a career-high 25 points. What does her veteran leadership bring to this team? Well, Fallon was uh, definitely attacking on Thursday. She not only uh, shot three-point shots, she hit some mid-range shots. She got to the basket and, and scored some layups and got fouled. And it was a great night for her as well, too. She was recognized for a 4.0 in the classroom. Uh, and so she's a true definition of a student athlete. After a strong first quarter, the offense had trouble finding uncontested shots against Moorhead State. What were the keys to keeping the game close? Yeah, I think Moorhead State is one of the better, if not the best, defensive team in the conference. And I do think we got some pretty good looks in the second half. They just didn't fall, but uh, I give credit to our team. We, we found a way to make it a three-point game starting the fourth period. We just we ran up against a good team. It was 16 and 7, and, and we gave it our best. And maybe you know a few more shots fall, a different outcome, but was, was pleased with our effort again on Saturday night. 
absolutely. You had just 10 turnovers against the Eagles, only three in the second half. How were you able to take care of the basketball against an aggressive defense? Well, we've made it a priority in practice uh, to take care of the basketball. And, and once again, it starts with Bree Williams, our senior point guard. She's done a good job of, of not turning the basketball over, playing, playing heavy minutes and only having one turnover. But I think the team is, has valued the basketball uh, during practices and games. Four away matchups before you return back to the Dunn Center February 15th. What will we be looking for for your team on the road? Well, hopefully four wins. But uh, what we want to need to concentrate on is I think teams have been pretty physical against us. We've got to do a better job of, of keeping teams off the, the rebounds, off the offensive glass, and then we have to go rebound the ball. And we've got to find a way to score a few more points, and hopefully that's going to be in transition and trying to get to the free throw line. UT Martin is coming off two big road wins. How will your defense look to combat their high scoring offense? Yeah, they, they have multiple players that can score in multiple different ways. And so uh, our first game against them, I thought we, we did a good job uh, once again scouting them and, and our players uh, carrying that out. Uh, they've put a few more wrinkles into their offense. We're going to have to uh, play at a high level and be locked in defensively. You top Southeast Missouri in a one-point thriller back in early January. What are the keys to getting the season sweep against the Red Hawks? Yeah, they're, they're another good. The, the first thing that jumps out at me is their defense. Very tough defensively. They change defenses. They play a man-to-man. -man, they play a matchup zone. Uh, they play a regular zone. So we're going to have to recognize what defense they're in and, and attack some, some hopeful, hopefully mismatches with that. With pivotal conference contests coming up, what will your message be? to the team makes this, trying to make a postseason push? Well, it sounds like coach speak, but it's one day at a time. I just want to get better today when we practice. We want to get better and prepare for UT Martin on Wednesday and, and go play and give them our best shot. And the same thing with Southeast Missouri, but just concentrate on, on uh, small things, getting better fundamental wise, getting better as a, as a team. And I go back to what I said earlier. We, we've got to be a little more physical rebounding and, and we got to push the pace of play. All right, best of luck on Thursday. Next up, we go one on one with Steve Harris, guard for the Governors. I'm next to Steve Harris. Steve, you got your first career start against Belmont, responded with a career high 20 points. Talk about that experience. I mean, I just kind of just uh, was playing confident. Uh, I saw that they guarded in some ways that would give me opportunity to score, and I just tried to be aggressive on offense. You definitely responded. You started playing extended minutes at point guard. How is that transition going? Um, it's going well. Um, gaining more confidence every day in practice. Um, definitely a new thing, but I accepted the challenge. And it's something you played in high school, right? Yeah, I played uh, my last two years of high school. I played a lot more point guard, yeah. So when he said, Hey, we're going to start putting you at point guard. Were you excited about that opportunity? Yeah, very excited, yeah. How is it different? Um, it's a big difference because you have to get your teammates involved and kind of the whole offense is determined on you a little bit more and you have, it's a lot more pressure on your shoulders. You're from St. Louis. Talk a little bit about what it means to get the opportunity to enhance your education, play collegiate basketball here. Uh, it's a big opportunity. A lot of people, uh, they fall into temptations of the streets. Um, I'm grateful to have got the opportunity to better myself as a person and just to better myself in my education. Um, I was looking at Austin P because um, my sister used to be stationed here um, at Fort Campbell and yeah. Definitely. Now, you mentioned your brother-in-law and sister uh, being stationed at Fort Campbell during your freshman, right, and yeah. sophomore years. Earlier this season, you were able to play on base. How did that feel like a home away from home for you? Uh, it was big for me. Um, it was great to be back on base. I hadn't been back in a while. Um, definitely a lot of nights, you know, eating home-cooked meals with my sister there. Um, it was just great to see some familiar faces and um, just be back there. It was definitely a home away from home, yeah. All right, thanks, dude. Best of luck. Now, both teams travel to play UT Martin on Thursday. The women tip off at 5.30, and the men will follow that matchup. You can follow updates on our social media sites at Austin P W B B and Austin P M B B or watch online at the OVC Digital Network. Thanks so much for watching Inside the Film Room. I'm Kristen Ergel. We'll see you next time.